Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part four of Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends Complete. And today we're going to be playing as Zhu Xu, making his first numbered series um, non-side game appearance in Dynasty Warriors 8. He's going to be leading Liu Bei and his troops through the Eight Gates formation in the Battle of Xinye. And here's the thing. The Battle of Xinye actually made its first appearance in Dynasty Warriors 7, except Zhu Xu was a generic officer there. Now he's actually a playable character here. And the thing is, he's got a really cool weapon, and you're going to see it firsthand right after the cutscene. Well, before we get to the actual battle, we might as well talk to everybody in the camp. But, there is one thing that's a reoccurring joke that ironically shows up at Dynasty Warriors 9. It's me, my lord. I followed you since the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Yeah, that guy. He's in this camp too, except he doesn't have a voice in this game. Oh, he has a voice in 9, but, uh... Yeah, Vox voice actors. That's all I have to say. And I find this pretty ironic that uh, despite the minimal role that Zushu played in real life, he had a bigger role in Dynasty War. Not, well, not just in Dynasty Wars, but he also has a bigger role in uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms where he just literally... Uh, just say, hey, Zuga Leong's over there, but I'm going to get you to this formation first. And then after that, he just rode off into the sunset to Wei, and he would never be seen again until Cherby, where he would pretty much die of illness afterwards. Well, the only reason he's fighting on South South Side in Cherby is primarily because of his mother, according to Romance. But... That's not really the case in real life, but enough about that. Zhu Xu is a humble person, and he basically thinks himself to being inferior to other strategists, particularly Suga Leong. <sighs> Keep selling that snake oil, Kong Ming. Oh yeah, we'll be dealing with Suga Leong in the next... Actually, no. Part 6, yes. Part 6. Because that's where his first official 
um, debut in this game is. No, I don't mean like official debut, like his first playable appearance. And oh look, here's Guan Ping. Yeah, he'll be here, but not playable. Again, your choice is this either Zhu Xu, it's Song Fei, Lu, and God damn it, it's Zhu Xu, Song Fei, and Liu Bei. So, with that said, all these officers that you probably see in the battle right now, only three of them are playable. And I've actually gotten everybody done. So, yeah, let's try to sell some of these weapons. So that way I'll be able to collect some better ones and accidentally stumble upon some uh, level fours. Which has happened to me, by the way. Me, in particular, I do not care about trying to get the uh, legendary weapons. And I've already made that perfectly clear, that I hated getting the legendary weapons. But when I do get them, it's glorious. Well, the glory has been taken out of the game come Dynasty Warriors 6, because there is no legendary weapons. And then when you realize how much of a waste of time they are in the new systems... Yeah, the legendary weapons practically suck. So, with that said, all we have to do is just follow Su Shu's instructions to the letter. If you don't, here's the thing that's going to happen. One, your main camp is going to obviously be seized and easily overtaken. Two, the Eight Gates formation, unlike with Dynasty Warrior 7 where you kept Bouncing off of spiked walls, the Eight Gates formation has its own fair share of BS, so you will probably be massacred if you happen to take the wrong path. And Lord have mercy, they were not kidding when you said... <clears throat> okay, uh, I just messed that up. I was trying to say, Lord have mercy, they weren't kidding when Zusu said... If you don't follow his directions, you're going to die. No, you are going to die. Because you can make something as easy as just listening to where Zushu wants you to go turn into something rather ridiculously difficult. <clears throat> and so long as the gates aren't broken, yeah, you're probably going to be SOL. Since we pretty much took care of the bridge, and hold on, let me take care of the unit commander so that nobody would be coming after us. But bear in mind one thing, once we enter the gates, somebody's going to come after the enemy, no, the main camp. That's what I meant to say, not the enemy commander. Ugh, I am stuttering too much because I love this weapon. Primarily, this weapon has a hook that um pretty much pulls enemies close to you that you can string up for infinite combos. Funny that he shows up in Empires and not in the actual um, Dynasty Warriors 7 game because guess what? He would probably be automatically getting like at least two to four um, uh, swords and two to four uh, shields so that way his um, attack and defense would end up gaining a lot of uh, stat boosts as well as his health so I could see why they kept them out until empires but still um, he pretty much could be useful in empires and he's useful anywhere else now if I only remember how to play as him because this guy has a uh, decent string of combos and I'm only just like slashing away because there's like multiple people in my path. Oh, I thought I was going the wrong way. I was going the right way. Hold on. Now, here's the thing about the eight gates formation. Um, Zhang Fei and Liu Bei has different directions in order to go through the eight gates formation. And also, you have to make sure that Zushu does not die. Likewise, with Liu Bei and Guan Yu, 
and also Zhang Fei. So that person that's in the base is uh, Guan Yu, and you don't want anything to happen to him. He is the main, uh, he's the main camp, basically. Yeah, I'm practically going through this eight gates really, really fast. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because of the fact that the eight gates formation in this can be easily broken However, I forgot to mention why this can be tedious. Look at the stat boosts. And also, um, Li Dian going primarily after um, the main camp. Not only does he stat boosts and not only defense, but attack um, works for everybody in the formation. Meanwhile, people who are out of the formation also gets those stat boosts as well. So there's no point in chasing after um, Li Dian unless you have one, two players, or two. <clears throat> the eight gates formation is broken, which will lower the morale and probably halt the attack. Or at least the attack will be as vicious. But if you go the wrong way... I promise you, the eight gates will increase the attack of every officer you face on top of having them all being, you know, inspired. They will have a worse inspirement and on top of the fact that they are pretty much going to have double attack and double defense if you went the wrong way. <coughs> so... Going in as uh, Zushu or following Zushu is the best path. And once you defeat Sao Ren, all the buffs around the formation is gone. That means your base won't be so easily captured. So all we practically have to do is just take care of business at the base. And pretty much save... Uh, main commander and the main camp from being taken. And of course, frame rate issues become a pain in the ass. Of course they do. So yeah, I'm looking at my uh, recorder on uh, Sony Vegas and I see that it's literally dropping frame rates down to 23 frames. I'm going to tell you right now, this has nothing to do with my computer setup. My computer setup pretty much has like the second best um, processor thus far. It doesn't have the newest one, but the most up-to-date one aside from the i7. Okay, it's not up-to-date. It's basically uh, not to the point of shovelware like having a two dual core or something like that. And on top of the fact that I have a graphics card that's actually pretty damn good on its own right. So it should not have these kinds of problems, but they have those problems anyway. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, despite the fact that it's actually my Wi-Fi that's the problem, because it's trying to conk out and reset itself, and has been doing that ever since Ian. That's a pain in the ass. And you want to know what else is a pain in the ass? The fact that my uh, my game was starting to crash. And it's going to end up getting a little bit worse from here. Or worse for wear. And those were times where I had to stop. Because the game was starting to, you know, disconnect. And if it did, well, I'd probably be SOL because... I forgot to mention, this is the debut of Li Dian and Yue Jin, and those two can be rather freaking dangerous. Oh look, uh, uh, it, it just crashed, so I had to reload. I tried to pause the game so that I won't have to get attacked, but lo and behold, I probably would get a- oh look, and my, and my mouse is in the way too. Thought I'd fix that problem, but I didn't. I tried to at least uh, 
deal with the whole issue before it crashed. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So all we practically have to do now is go back over to where the eight gates formation was and go to the, to the right. Almost to the left. We need to go to the right. Everything's almost to the right. So what we're going to do is go into a battle with UA Ying. And that's how we're going to end this uh, whole entire mission. Once we take care of UA Ying, that's all she wrote. But I must warn you of one thing. UA Ying's uh, Musao. Yeah. Oh, thank God I saved up Rage. But uh, Yue Ying's Musao is a pain in the butt. Specifically her first one. As her first Musao will, and I repeat, will come out. Uh, okay, let me rephrase that. They will have juggernauts, miniature juggernauts come out and explode. Coming to your general direction. That is her first Musao. And it's probably one of the toughest Musaos to deal with. Especially when, unless you actually fight your Musao with hers, you're going to get caught in the explosion and it's not going to end well. So now that we've defeated uh, Yue Ying, now all we have to do is go over to Zuga Liang's house. And that's basically what we're doing paying the man a house call and a visit and the only reason why we had to knock on his home three times is because of the fact that Zuga Leong was out in the fields both of those times and the third time he just happened to come back so yeah I think the knocking on the door three times is actually true because Zuga Leong was never around Again, before he was a strategist, he was a farmer. So with that said, all we have to do is go to this house here and we're done. Yes, the path of benevolence. Let me just say, ladies and gentlemen, while benevolence seems like a good idea at the time, well, um, let me remind you all what comes up after this, and that is escaping through Changban. Now, um, I'm pretty sure everybody's well familiar with Changban. How you gotta flee from South Sao because of the fact that uh, 
Liu Biao's son, Liu Kun, gave Cao Cao the keys of the kingdom to Jing province, which in turn caused Liu Bei to have to flee. So now, we're going to have to haul ass to the nearest person, or haul ass to Jing province, whichever one comes first. So, with that said, we're not going to be taking on this particular stage until part six. No, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, I did say that there was another stage had I got the other star requirement in the Battle of Shu Province. And believe it or not, we're going to be taking on that particular battle instead of this one. And... That battle is going to be on part 5. I'll see you all next time in the disturbance in Guangdu. This is RVMan985. See you guys next time. And remember folks, if there's more than one star requirement, make sure you do them both because there is going to be a halfway point. And if you don't have all the stars, well, uh... So much for actually getting a star requirement there. I'll see you all next time.